this is the moment of truth here. If the starter cranks over, then we wired it correctly. There's the button. Let's see. And nothing. Here we are guys. Still working on the Tom Sellers coupe. I'm changing the battery over. It was behind the driver's seat. I'm moving it over to the passenger seat. Adding some larger cable. We're gonna try to get this flathead cranked a little bit better than it was. So you saw we got the gas tank done and we got the tag back on there. So now it's on to the battery. Let's make a battery box. All right, here's my six volt battery. This is the one that was in it, I think. Take that back. This is a new battery. I forgot I had the Optima 6 volt, the little flat one. So we got to make a completely different mount for it now. Because if it had been in there previously, I would be making a new mount. So, duh. Been a minute, I guess. Um, this one I got from Traction Supply. We're going to drop this one in there and see if we can get it to crank in it better. Got my cardboard. And I'm just going to take some measurements. We're going to make it out of some angle iron. Um, a base and then we'll make some kind of a strap that goes over the top that we can still access and add water if we need to and it'll clamp it down and keep it from rolling around in the back so let's uh, get some measurements and we'll draw it out and get us a piece here get these pieces cut we're gonna end up uh, cutting these and putting 45s on the end so we can make kind of a frame that way it'll fit right down in there I can weld it up it'll be nice and smooth and nice and clean and it won't look like angle iron. I mean, it still kind of will, but you know, we're gonna make it nice anyway. Okay, earmuffs back on, let's go. Actually guys, it's not really a good idea to be grinding right next to your battery. I've already had one blow up on me that was right down here charging and I was cutting metal and it blew up. I just realized that at the time that one was charging. So it was off gassing. This one's not off gassing and it's not being charged, but I think I'll still keep it back away from where I'm working at. When I cut these to do a 45 on these, like a box like this, I always grind this edge at a 45 as well to meet the end there and then I'll knock it knock it back off so that when the two pieces come together I've got a nice space to weld right there also do that on the bottom that way I can weld that up and grind it smooth and it'll look really nice another one at six and three quarters double check yep wearing gloves sometimes can pull you up into items like drill presses and that kind of stuff but I know you don't want to wear loose clothes or but uh, these are a little big on me but uh, I like using them when I'm grinding because just like that instance I slipped off and hit my thumb and that would have taken my nail off but instead it took just part of the glove so you guys just be safe out there when you're working on these projects Right there. Hopefully I measured right. If if I didn't, y'all sit right there and watch me do it without telling me. So Let's see if that'll fit in there. Oh man, look at that. We're gonna tack it and see if it see if that battery fit. Check that I just moved it quite a bit. <laughs> Yeah. 
There we are. Yeah, that worked. True, guys, that looks pretty darn good. Look at that. Check my welds. Get my welding inspector there. See if we can knock these corners out. Gotta get in there tight. Otherwise, that battery is gonna sit right up, sit up in that high up in that corner. Doki, we had the battery mounted over there on actually right here underneath the old gas tank I had in here. And I ran two gauge wire to the starter, but it just never did ever crank fast enough. So what I thought I would do is move the starter over or starter move the battery over here to this side and that way I can go straight down the frame rail to the starter so I think I'm going to mount it right here and I'm just going to use these existing uh, frame mounts here for two of them and then I'll drop another one down and bolt it right to the floor there so let's we're going to add a couple of tabs to this so that that battery tray can sit right there and then we'll make a strap. Once we get those on, we'll make a strap to hold the battery in. And the other, the other part there. It's the old battery box. It was a Optima 6 volt, which is half of a 12 volt. So it's just like the three little cylinders. And I had it laid flat down there. But I'm gonna utilize this. This is gonna become my leg over here. Go to the floor. And then I'm gonna cut this part up to be my new tabs here. Already got a hole drilled, so might as well. I'm not gonna put a six volt Ultima back in there because they're too dang expensive and, and didn't last very long. So I'm gonna utilize this metal that I've got. This is just eighth inch, uh, looks like inch and a half maybe, flat stock. I'll have to figure out the length I need on that one when it goes in. But uh, this corner is going to sit on that X member in there underneath the floor. So I think I'm going to probably attach that and stand there to this other corner. Give it some rigidity there to hold it. Anyway, we'll hang on to that one for now. So I'm going to take this and go on over the car and get that ready to weld in. I'll unhook that bolt and bolt that down and that'll give me kind of a little placement that one it'll find its home once I get it in there so let's just go over the car let's see. I'm gonna have to trim that yeah I'm gonna have to trim that let's see if that fits should fit right on there oh yeah look at that I need to bend it a little bit to get it to flatten out. Yeah, I think I'll do that real quick too. As a matter of fact. Oh yeah, here we go. Now we're talking. Put that in there by hand. This up here. That's going to work absolutely perfecto. Heck yeah, baby. Okay, that's in there good. Yeah. 
we'll let that cool a little bit. We'll drop the battery in there. And then we need to, need to make a hold down port. Got my brackets made. These are gonna be the hold downs. It's just a little Z bracket. These are gonna be the two hold downs I wanna put on here. They're gonna basically fit like that and hold that battery in. So hopefully that works. Try to drop that battery in there. In fact, that right there. It left a little gap. I didn't make them the same height as the side. I cut another eighth inch off of it. That way when it tightens up, it, it could pull it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. A little warm. That'll work. We'll get that sucker painted and we'll drop it in the car and bolt that thing down. Then we've got to drill a couple holes for the new cables. I've got new wire uh, wire cable in the in the car there. So we'll start getting that made up and start making some short runs. I'm adding a solenoid and a push button to it to get rid of the foot switch. Hopefully that'll take out some of the um, the weakest link, I think. I know I took it apart and it was corroded pretty good. I cleaned it up, put it all back together and it still didn't really make a difference. But I'm hoping that the push button with the solenoid will make a huge difference on there. and it Because it's going to be right there by the daggum starter. Hopefully it'll fire up good. I hope. We'll see. Got her all painted. Ready to install. But I really need to vacuum this thing out because it's got loads and loads of sand in it now that I'm looking at putting that bolt in the floor. <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and vacuum all this out. That sounds like a good idea to me. That's going to work perfectly. That's just right. All I need to do now is to set the battery in, punch the holes for the cables, and start running cables down here. I'll have to install the solenoid down there, wire up the push button, and we'll just keep on moving forward here. Let's see. Just a tad bit off, probably from welding. Now it's lined up. Get these suckers on here. Get this thing done, so I'm gonna fire this thing up and drive it. Let's see. There's one right there. Some of stuff. I think it was from the battery cable. Yep, I got two right here on this frame rail. Here. Loose. And get on that side and pull all that off. And then we can rerun them on this on this other side. We're just gonna come right down. So there's the bolt there. We're gonna come right down here on the inside of this, right through this hole where the exhaust should be. And we're gonna go straight down there to the starter. That's gonna work perfect. Juicy old girl right there, boy. Got all the fluids in her. Man, look at that. Yeah. That'll work just right. Oh yeah, I like that better. 
Can't go nowhere. So that's two gauge. That's, uh, I think, twice as thick as four gauge, which normally when you run like 12 volt, four gauge is perfect. But that's uh, super thick stuff, so we'll hang on to it. We'll use that on the Roadster. of the cables right here to take off. I gotta take the starter off. Mm. One more off the trans. And then my mount on the you see. Let's see if you can see this. So I even added when I was trying to figure out why it wasn't cranking I even added another ground to the starter here right off of my my frame. So what I did was I Drop the positive down to the frame, bolted it up down there, and let the frame carry the current here to the X member. And then I I ran it over here. Let's see. So it the positive runs to the frame right there, or to the motor. And then I also ran another positive directly to the starter in case there was some kind of connection failure here between the starter and the block. And then this would be your negative off of the off of the starter switch to the kill switch to the battery. So huh, that was a lot of work putting that together. So I hope hope that uh, all this is gonna fix that. I hope it does. We'll see. So all right, I picked up this uh, standard solenoid SS five seven one. At six volt, so need to find a spot down here on the frame, and I think I know where I'm going to put it at. I'm going to turn it sideways so that my my battery cable can run in here, and then it can go to my starter there. So most of the guys run them like that or like that. I'm going to run it on its side. Hopefully, it won't make any difference. We'll know pretty quick when we try to start it. And I got to make it easier on myself. That's going to be too close. And right there will work. Okay. So I'm just going to put it right up here on the side, of the frame rail. Get to that one. Right there. And get that one. Now we can mount that inside. And I'm not worried about the bolts showing on the outside. I gotta try to make this easy on myself, man. This is too hard. That's why I'm making it too hard anyway. <laughs> Would have been smarter for me to put this on when I first built the car. But I was really kind of using the, my whole thinking was using like original style parts, which is what I had on hand. So anyway, it is what it is. We're getting it done now. It's a little bit harder though, because it would have been nice to have done that when there wasn't a body on the frame. <laughs> Bought this wiring kit off of Amazon. It came with this kind of cool ring terminal kit, which is kind of wild with heat shrink. So that's kind of nice. Hopefully those things will bolt up to everything I need them to bolt up to. They look like they got kind of a big, big old hole in them. But uh, it is what it is. Let's get this apart. And 
separate the black from the red wire. First thing we're going to do is cut this and put a ring terminal on it. This stuff, I think it's from, yeah, it's welding cable. It's from Timco, I believe. Timco Industrial. I've got this little, I got this little deal, which is a, it, uh, oh, what do you call it? I don't know what it's called, but it sets those. Whatever the name of that little tool is, it's you can hammer those down. What do you call that? I don't know. Anyway, you put it in there, and then you hammer it down, and that sets those on your cable. We're going to do it right here on this. Just using a regular flat razor blade cut this you can do it girl it's kind of a booger there's not really there's probably a tool for that but I don't have it so we're going to use razor blade this and hammer and get her done perfect let's see yeah that worked Probably make that a little bit longer. We'll do that on the next one. Whoop. See what? Well, put that, put that deal in there, and then I'll feed that in. And I'm gonna give it a big old fat whack there. Make sure it's in there. There you go, and it's crimped down on there. You see it. Now we can take that, put it over it, and heat that up with a heat gun. Grab the heat gun. We want it on super hot, flaming hot. In order to get that. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, baby. That looks good. It's nice and clean. Awesome. Yeah, check that out. That looks nice, didn't it? Whew. Okay, now we can. We need to drill a couple holes by the battery. We'll shove that up in there and we'll measure it for the... That's going to go all the way to the... You have to think backwards because 6 volt positive ground, the positive is actually going to go to the, to the block. So we're going to bolt it to the bell housing. I have to think about this because it just like screws me up completely but the positive is not going to go to the starter or the solenoid first it's going to go to the bell housing and then the ground runs the through the solenoid and to the starter so it's crazy and it works just fine it's weird I don't know how but it does it's like super magic So I'm just going to mark a line back here and make sure I drill my holes on that line. I do want it to look somewhat straight and nice. Oh man, come on baby, let's go Let's drill that. There it is. Okay. So my X X frame runs up here, right up underneath this battery. So I know I've got plenty of room here.
got them. Seven eighths inch holes. That's crazy. The grommet I want to use is takes a one inch hole. So and that cable is probably three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna need all of that hole there. I'm gonna run that up in there. I think it'll fit. Oh yeah, it fit fine. Just fine. Let me go back underneath there. Hopefully got enough length here. I think I got 10 foot, which should be fine, actually. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run. I need to unhook that or lay it out. Cause we're gonna have to run it through this frame rail here. We're gonna run it right through this exhaust hole here, which is a big double double hole in the X member. And we're gonna run it right down the frame, or down the frame towards the solenoid. Then we're gonna jump off and go through this hole right here and run it right over to the block. So right here's the starter cap, which I don't know if you can see. Let's just grab you and bring you over here. Okay, so we're gonna run it. Let's see if I can get you here. We're gonna run it right down this frame rail and we'll end up connecting it to the ground here that's gonna run to the solenoid and then we'll just jump off here and run there. There's the block. So we'll connect it right directly to the block. Should be pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So I got these larger clamps from my air ride up on another project but I'm gonna go ahead and use those to get this wire to stay up there not dirt right in my eyes perfect One more there we gotta run this through the hole there we got going on here there we go I thought maybe this it might have enough for two vehicles but apparently since I get the got the 10 footer kit it's it's enough for one and back in the day when I worked at the stereo shop in college we would uh, we would run this stuff on on a uh, truck or a car that had a huge system in it but <laughs> I guess six volt needs it too. We gotta bolt it right up here to that. And this is gonna have to go to that bolt right there. So give myself a little extra room. I think I'll do it right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, I probably shouldn't have mounted that down, but now that I know we're good to go, I can cut that. And so now I gotta take it all back out. Awesome. That's it. That's that's part of the job. Let's get it. All right, back and forth, back and forth. So we need to cut this cable off. There's the line right there. We need to cut this cable off. And I really don't have any, you really need bolt cutters to cut this stupid stuff up. Couldn't see it, it was on the back side. That's really going easier than I thought it would. Just going to go around a circle, getting a good pinch. There you go. I'm surprised that was a little easier than I thought it was going to be. I figured I was going to be fighting that sucker. Okay. Got her cut. 
Not bad, not bad. Let's get an ink pen in there. Mark this. I'm going to put a little bit more down inside there this time. They're straight. Let's get it in there. I'm ready to fire this thing up, man. I'm getting antsy about it. Actually holding itself in there, which is good. Got it. Oh yeah. Heat shrink time. I'll give that a little tug. That ain't coming out of there, so that's good. Cool. Ready to go back in. We'll get some, get some more clamps, and we'll get that sucker in there, and it'll be done. The negative wire, I'm probably going to zip tie it to it. So I'll just put some black zip ties right, right along it, and just zip tie it in several more places than the clamps, and that way it'll hold it in place. So now I got the positive cable hooked up to the back of the trans there. Let's see. Let's go under here show you what it looks like so you can see it there it runs down the frame rail it's hard to video that there you go and it goes right through the exhaust port there in the X member and then goes up in the floor back here so let's uh let's do the negative now which is going to the solenoid we're just going to zip tie that one to the red cable for now Okay. Don't forget that this battery's hot, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unhook that red from that battery right there. And that way we don't have to worry about that making contact. Oh, there we go. Let's do that. Forgot it was loose. There. Bunch of freaking ragging my rig, man. I'm going back and forth on this thing. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. There we go. And now that that's right in your way. I had to take the solenoid off to get the. to get the uh, red cable bolted down up there with the clamp. So now I gotta put it back on. Yeah, I can hear the thunder. I gotta figure out where that mark was at because it's all dirty. No, I'm, there it is. I marked it on the white writing on there. So, get that cut off. Yeah. Come on, you sucker, you. Dressed up, go to your home. Black. Let's get some black uh, paint shrink here. Whew. It's like doing flooring in a in a house. You're always on your knees, and then 
when you gotta get up, it just you're wearing yourself out. But we're gonna get it. We're gonna knock this sucker out. And then next time we're gonna do it with a solenoid instead of uh the put no instead of the foot starter. We're just gonna do this from now on and not worry about it. Just automatically assume we're gonna need one. All right, let's go back over the car. I had to drive into town for that one little ring terminal. I actually got my starter wire plumbed in and I ran a new wire along with it down here to the hot side, or actually the negative side of the battery. So that'll give me enough juice up there for my fuse panel to run that Stromberg 90, uh, no, not Stromberg 97, Stromberg e-fire. We're getting pretty close to starting it, so we need to put this one ring terminal on, and then we'll connect the battery, tighten it all up, and see if it'll fire. I hope it does. Hope I figured it out and wired it right. We'll see, though. All right. The only thing I got left is a few zip ties and hooking up this. Uh, this body, uh, I normally you'd call it a ground, but it's that's feeds the hot. This is this is the one I've got for the actually hooked up the positive to the bell housing and forgot to add that to the bell housing. So got it. Let's go in here. this back in here. Whoops. This is the moment of truth here. If the starter cranks over, then we wired it correctly. There's the button. Let's see. And nothing. Okay. I got a little frustrated, but that's all right. You guys saw that I hit the button and it didn't do nothing. So I had to take it, I took the solenoid out and double checked it, put it on the battery, it works fine. I thought that was the problem, it just didn't work out of the box. But actually the problem was, I'm, I had a one wire starter button, I actually needed a two wire. So I got the two wire starter button in there now, and I'm fixing to add that spade clip, and I can, and I can uh, plug it in. And we should be good to go. We should have some power then. Looks like I just all have to get a fuse and add it. I see one fuse right there that I can put on it. I'm, I'm just wiring it directly up to my uh, fuse box here. So I actually had uh, a ground going to the solenoid and it was grounded to the chassis. Instead, I needed a, I needed a hot. So. And I got a little frustrated because I was like, man, I worked on this stupid thing all freaking week. Trying to get this battery hooked up and all that stuff. And then it don't work, you know. You know how it is. You guys have been there, I know. I'm not, I'm preaching to the choir right now. It was just one little stupid thing that I did. Okay, fuses on there. We should be good to go. We're in neutral. Uh, let's see if it spins over. Battery's hooked up. Well, that's good. Let's see how fast it spins over. Yeah, not bad. Turn that on and see if it does anything. Well, I still have the still have the gas pump or the gas pump. I still have the gas tank not plumbed yet. I haven't put any gas. I haven't put my hose on and I haven't put any gas in there. But that's good. It's actually spinning over a lot better 
a lot better than it ever has. Usually it's a lot slower than that. That's good, man. That thing's that thing's yanking her in there. Just so you guys know, here's the difference between two gauge and two aught gauge. That made a huge difference. So if your flathead is running slow, it's probably that right there. You can tell the difference. I mean, that's almost double the size. Might help you get rid of that headache anyway that you got on that flathead, not spinning over quick, fast enough. And if you're running electronic ignition, you really need that voltage up there at the distributor because if you're running that smaller cable, it's gonna suck the juice away from that, from that distributor because it, it's having a hard time pulling it through there. So there you go. So there you go, flathead lessons from Chadillac. Upgrade to two-aught gauge cable. See ya.